what advice do you have for for couples to maintain connection even when things are super busy? I always tell men that I'm friends with <clears throat> as a life hack who are in relationships, particularly relationships with women. I'll tell them, leave notes. Just leave a note. When you go to work in the morning, if you leave your wife a note, your girlfriend a note that just says, you know, hey, babe, you know, so nice hanging out with you last night, watching that thing on Netflix. I, I'm in love with the prettiest girl in the world. You know, have a great day. Like, dude, there's not a woman alive who's not going to be like, if you do that. I mean, for, I, I actually had a friend, a guy at the gym who I see every day where I was at the gym around the same time. And he read my book and we were talking about the idea of leaving notes. And a couple of weeks later, he came to me and he goes, listen, I want to thank you. He goes, I did the note thing. And it's like literally like unbelievably changed the relationship. Like, like he goes, but the first couple of days, she was like, what is going on? Are you cheating on me? Are you dying? Like, what are you doing? And I said to her, I'm like, oh, I just want to make a more of a, like, I want to try to remind myself of how important you are to me. And he said, after like two weeks of it, he's like, it's, we've never had better sex. We've never had like, she's never been nicer to me. Like, it's incredible. Like he was like, it's a transformative thing. And I said, yeah, what does it take? And he's like, it takes like literally 30 seconds a day. Like it takes nothing. He's like, and I just write like a little something. Like I just write a little funny thing, you know? Oh, I heard that song. Remember that song we used to listen to? Or I'll like write like a silly little haiku or it doesn't even have to be that creative. It can just be some, I can't, you know, I'm, leaving for work, but I can't wait to see you at the finish line. Like just little, something like that. Because what are you really doing? You're telling this person, I love you, I value you. I mean, when is the last time that you looked at your partner? Like when you're first dating someone, you're constantly telling them how beautiful they are, how handsome they are, how smart they are, how wonderful they are. But like really, what, what would it hurt? to just say a kind word to your party, just be like, God, you're so pretty. Like when they're standing there in the mirror doing their thing, if you're standing there in the mirror shaving or whatever, you know, and your girl walks by and she goes, God, you are so hot. Like you, there's no way you wouldn't be like, oh yeah, like really? Like, okay, that's cool, thanks, you know? Like it's the greatest feeling in the world. So why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you, it costs nothing to do that. You know, so I, I think these little tiny things are just so easy that we just don't do them because we're like, well, you know, this person knows. Obviously, I love you. Like, I'm been living with you. Of course, I love you. Like, what do you mean? I love you. Yeah, of course, I think you're pretty. I'm with you. I, there's a lot of pretty women and I'm not with them so I could be with you. So obviously, I think you're pretty. OK, but it's nice to be told you're pretty. And by the way, the, the guy at her job who tells her she's pretty. Like if he, if the guy at her job has told her she's pretty more often than you and you live with her, that's not great. That's not great. Like that's not a good thing. If the guy in her Instagram messages tells her how pretty, how great her hair looks and you haven't ever mentioned it and vice versa. I'm not hitting on men. Believe me, women too. Same thing, man. Like if a wo woman doesn't say to you like, hey, you know, I'm so like, thank you for just, I always feel so safe when I'm with you or like, hey, thanks for you know, like, I, like, I'm so good. I, you're such a good provider for me. Like, it just means the world to me. Like, I look at my friends who are struggling and I see how lucky I am to have a man who takes such good care of our family, whatever, whatever it is. Like, I don't know the dynamic of a couple, you know, there's some couples where they both pull the weight. There's some couples where one person does one thing, the other person does something else, but, but why not compliment that and be mindful of it and remind your partner that you're cheering for them and that you love them and value them. And, and that will inspire them, I hope, to do the same to you. And there is not one of us that doesn't enjoy that. Because I call bull on the like red pill manosphere guys that are like, we don't need women. Okay, why are you on a video telling me you don't need women then? If you don't need women, just go about not needing women. That's cool. Like you, you obviously do because you're, you're, you're getting up talking about why they're what you're trying to say, I think, is that, the, that these women are failing you. You feel like they're failing your expectation. That's a conversation worth having. You know, are they not fulfilling a reasonable expectation that you should have of them? And how do we fix it? Or are your expectations unreasonable? I, again, that's a conversation worth having. But just saying like, well, I don't care. It's like the, the, the people when we were like, you know, in college or, you know, they were like, well, I made like musicians were like, I make my music for me. Okay. Then why aren't you just like in your room playing it? 
Why are you trying to get on a stage to play it? If you're making your music just for you, great. You don't share with anybody. If I wrote a book just for me, I wouldn't publish it. You know, I'm publishing it because I want people to like it. I want people to learn something from it. I want people to get something from it. I want the ego gratification of, of having people enjoy my work. These are the reasons why we do these things. So be honest about it. Be real about it. Like you don't have to get married. You don't have to live with someone. You don't have to be in a committed relationship. You don't. You don't. It's great. If you don't want that, if that's not for you, you don't have to do it. So if you're going to do it, then you've got to make certain habits, compromises, and choices. But the great news, you don't have to. If, if it doesn't suit you, if you're one of these people that goes, well, I'm not doing that, cool, then don't get married. Or don't expect your marriage to work because it won't. You know, that, and that's okay. Just, but again, if, you, if you're like, I don't want to do the things that are necessary to be married, but I also want to get married. Okay, I don't have to tell you them because that's not a great, that's like saying, I don't want to have a job, but I definitely want to go to work. What, I don't, what does that mean? That, that, that doesn't make any sense. When you're in conversation with a client that's going through a divorce and there was infidelity involved and you ask the question, why did you cheat? What's the most common answer? Wow. Anyone's ever asked me that? It's a good question. I tend to not ask people why they cheat. So I, I want to say that from the beginning because I don't really know that – A, I don't know that it's any of my business. B, I don't know that it's relevant to their divorce. And C, I don't think they would be able to give me an honest answer. But I'll answer a different question, which is why do I think people cheat? <laughs> and I think the answer is is as simple as, as frustrating, and that is that they're not fulfilled sexually. I mean, I think that's why people – it's like why do people eat? Because they're hungry. The question is why aren't people satisfied sexually? That's a bigger question. And I think there are some people that want variety. And they're not comfortable with admitting that. And they're not cut out for monogamy for whatever reason, that they, they, the sexual variety is too important to them. And then I think those people maybe need to think about the connection between love and sex, because I don't think monogamy has, to, like love doesn't have to be monogamous and monogamy doesn't mean that you're sexually satisfied. And being, by the way, being not fully satisfied sexually also may not be the worst thing in the world. I don't know that I'm qualified to say if it is or isn't. I will say that it, it generally doesn't end well for people when they're unhappy from a, a sexual satisfaction standpoint. People are not honest with each other about sex. I mean, that's, again, realism. Like, I just don't think people are honest with each other about sex. They, they <clears throat> may not be honest with themselves about what they want. And they're certainly not comfortable being honest with their partner about what they want. Again, because they don't, there's never a good time to say something your partner doesn't want to hear. And so saying to your partner, hey, look, I'm not enjoying the sex as much as I used to, or we're not having as much sex as we used to. There's lots of good, lovely, loving reasons why you wouldn't share that with your partner. You know, like you're, you're, you know that they're dealing with something and that's why you guys aren't having much sex is that, you know, so you don't want them to feel badly. Or you think, well, why should I, I'm not a baby, like I can do without, you know, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. But I, I think sex is important. And I think people have to be honest with themselves about what their sexual needs are. And they have to be able to be honest with their partner about what their sexual needs are. And I think that's, those are both really hard things. It's harder probably to be honest with another person than it is to be with yourself. But a first step is to be honest with yourself about your sexual needs. And I think that's a hard thing to do. Uh, and then I think sharing it with your partner is a hard thing to do too. But again, you know, I, one of the reasons I, I appreciate your work, Doug, is that as a parent, you know, I, I talk a lot for a living, but I don't really claim to have any unique wisdom necessarily to impart on the world. But when I was raising my sons, I, I said to them both, and I stand by it, that the most valuable lesson I have to offer them, the most valuable axiom, the most valuable piece of advice I can give them is the hard thing to do and the right thing to do are almost always the same thing. I, I genuinely believe that in life, that the hard thing to do and the right thing to do are almost always the same thing. Like, like the harder path is almost always the right one. Like it is hard to sit there rather than playing with your phone, but it's, it's better. 
You know, it's hard to be uncomfortable in a group setting instead of having a drink to like drop your, you know, your inhibitions. If you look, but it's better. It's better to learn how to be uninhibited in a natural way. It's hard to to find time to get good sleep, but it's better. Like the hard thing and the right thing. You know, Jocko Willenick always, you know, one of one of the best gems I think he ever said is that discipline is trading what you want now for what you want most. And I really love that. I think that is such a, a, a gospel piece of wisdom that that because what we want most is love and connection. And what we want now is stuff and things and attention and co- right. But what we want most, like think about what we want most. And, and if we keep our eye on that and we do the hard things that, that, that we need to do to, to keep our eye on that ball of what we want most, I, I think that's a better path. So would you say the reasons that you think that people cheat, would you say the opposite is also true that if you're really focused on not just having healthy communication with your partner around sex, that you're also like showing them love and doing the small things and complimenting them? Because you made the example like if a guy's like coworker or somebody from back in the day is like complimenting him more than his wife, like that's a problem. So would you say that that is also true? Yeah, I not only think it's true, but I actually think that, again, it's a cycle. Because in addition to how good it feels that her coworker is telling her how pretty she is, giving them the praise and the positivity that they're not getting at home, right? So not only are they now getting that reward from someone other than their primary part, but they're also going to then come home with a resentment. There's no way around that, that they come home and they're like, like, why I come home? Like the people at work are nicer to me than this person, you know, because the, the silence is deafening then, you know, because if you have someone else telling you you're pretty or you're smart or you're competent or you're great or you're awesome, or they wish they had someone like you and you have someone who has you, who has you, you know how many guys do that? Well, if I was your man, I would never let that. Your guy did what? Well, if I was your man, I would never do. Okay. Or the, the women that are like, oh my God, God, you're so, your wife is so lucky or your girlfriend's so lucky. I mean, does she realize how awesome you are? God, men suck and you're so great. And then you go home and your partner's just like, yeah, you're, you know, it's just you, you're you, you know, like you're not, you know, that, that is a spiral. Because then you're starting to be like resentful and short with this person. And then what happens? They don't feel closer to you. They're not going to be more likely to compliment you. It's a death spiral. You know, it's, it's, like the, it's like the person that says on Monday or on Sunday night, all right, I start my diet tomorrow. I start my diet tomorrow. It's Monday and I start my diet tomorrow. And they get up and they have a good breakfast and they do okay for lunch. And then they get home and they're like, oh, my God, I want some real food. And then they eat a bunch of food and they go, well, you know what? Now it's Tuesday. I mean, I'll, you know. I'm not going to start on Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. I'm going to do Tuesday. All right, so I'll start my diet Wednesday then, you know? And then they're like, well, it's already Wednesday and I didn't do it. I'll start it on this weekend. Oh, well, I can't. This weekend I'm going to that barbecue. So, you know, okay, maybe Monday, next Monday I'll start again. It's, you know, there's never going to be a good time, right? So you got to start somewhere. Like it's like early sobriety, you know? It's like, well, I can't quit drinking now. It's the March Madness. Well, I can't quit drinking now. It's St. Patrick's Day in two weeks. Well, I can't quit drinking now. Okay, there will always be a reason why you shouldn't do it right now. So just do it right now. Like go home that day and start treating your spouse or partner a little different and be patient. You know, do it without total expectation. Do it with a certain level of patience. Do it because it's true. I hope. I hope you're with your partner. Because if you're, by the way, if there's nothing redeeming about your partner, that, that you don't don't feel any connection to them, you don't love them, they're not funny, they're not pretty, they're not, leave. Like, figure it out. Get out. Go. And I'm not just saying that for job security. Go. There's 8 billion people in the world. 8 billion. Roughly 4 billion of each sex. There's a few more women than men. So why? Why? Why are you? You're only here for a certain amount of time. You're going to die. So don't be with someone who you just, there's nothing about them that you could connect to or come home and be positive about or cheerlead for. If they have no redeeming qualities, you've chosen poorly and great news. There's like 4 billion alternate selections available to you. Or if you're bisexual, almost 8 billion. So you got a huge menu you can choose from. 
So I, I, I genuinely think that, you know, be the person who they see their coworker as or the other people in the world. I mean, this is more than ever before, especially with social media. Like, you know how many people are sliding into everybody's DMs back and forth and everybody's just like in touch with everybody. And of course, like it's the outside view. So, you know, you're only seeing the best stuff of a person. So it's really easy to compliment them. If I, I would tell you something, if, 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 if I was a quarter of the man that the women in my DMs who watch, you know, me do a video about relationships or they watch me do a podcast and they're like, oh, he's so this. If I was a quarter of the man that those women think I am, I would be like the greatest man in the whole wide world. It's an idealized vision of someone. And, and that's, you know, that's lovely. But you don't actually know this person. I'm not saying we don't all have redeeming qualities. We do. And hopefully the people in our lives, the love in our lives, like they see the best in us and they're connected to the best in us. So all I'm suggesting people do is that they, they shine a light on that. 